Danny, I was doing a bit of channel hopping last night. I was watching a bit of Tottenham in Milan, watching a bit of PSG up against uh, Bayern Munich. But on Tottenham, they lose 1-0. Mm. They're still very much in this tie, incidentally, aren't they? But how do you judge Spurs and their overall progress? Because that is the question. That's what it comes down to. Um, well, first and foremost, I think last night was acceptable. I think the two young lads in midfield did well. There was a worry and concern there with the three main players they normally act, they choose from not available. It gives them an opportunity to, to get them at home with the crowd behind them and really go after them. So I think he'll be, well, you're never happy with the defeat. It's it's bearable and the performance was okay. I was like you, I was skipping between. In terms of Tottenham overall, I think they've, They've stuttered a bit this season. I think there was a genuine hope with the signings they made in the summer that they would progress and be better. Um, the biggest argument, of course, is what the fans are seeing on the pitch in terms of entertainment, in terms of Conte's pragmatism, in terms of the way they set up continually with a unwillingness to change. Mm. That's probably the biggest concern. And ultimately, if they're trophyless and don't finish in the top four this season, he's failed. Yeah. Conte, and that, that would be it. Conte, Conte was interesting afterwards because he's he's saying first off, regards to this tie, we're still very much in it. Indeed. We can do it. Have a listen. It was a pity to to consider goal after uh, five minutes, because I think that in this uh, specific situation uh, we could do much better. We are talking about uh, the first game for the qualification. Uh, there are two games. I hope, but I'm sure that uh, in the second game in uh, our stadium, Tottenham Stadium. Uh, uh, I know I know that our fans will create uh, uh, an important atmosphere to push us uh, and uh, to overcome uh, uh, Milan obstacle. I mean, that's those are the noises he should be making, Simon, yes. shouldn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. I think it's also, you know, you've got to look at the Spurs situation with no defence of Daniel Levy and what people will consider to be a lack of ambition to compete with those that have got endless amounts of money and don't have the same constraints that possibly Tottenham have, is I ask myself the question, with the PSG performance last night getting beaten by Munich, would Tottenham win the French League if they were playing in the, t in the French League? I suspect they probably would. They have a good chance. Right, so then put Tottenham into that situation and say, how have PSG, who've spent more money than, than most of us can ever consider, how, how have they done besides win a league that Tottenham would win if they were competing in it? And then look at Tottenham's achievement in the league, which is far more competitive against a group of clubs that have far more innate ability and finances than Tottenham would compete against another league. So I think we've got to compare what Tottenham are actually achieving rather than the brouhaha and the hullabaloo that goes around the fact that Tottenham won't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other football clubs and don't win anything. Mm. I do have to think, to think sometimes without over um, uh, politicising the argument that you have to be realistic about what your expectations mm. are when you're competing against sides that have infinitely more financial muscle than you do. But tell me what they're achieving. Well, they're competing. <gasps> they're achieving... Of as course a, they're competing. Ten, That's the least they can tw do. 20 years ago, Tottenham were nigh on bust. They were a mid-table side. 25 mm. years ago, they were practically bust. You know, so with that in mind, you've now got a football club that's financially well healed, hasn't won what it should have won, snatched defeat from the jaws of victory in really big moments. Yeah. Champions League finals. PSG have spent billions yeah. and have got to Champions League finals and have done no better. I know I'm making an example of PSG, which is not relevant to the Premier League, but I'm giving you an example of powerhouses in, in football and what your expectations can really be when we've got a league that's full of powerhouses. So I, I'm not trying to give Daniel a pass. No, no. I'm looking at it pragmatically and saying, what have they achieved? They are competing for the top four in this division most seasons. Well, Sam, well, many, many Tottenham fans, Danny, sorry to jump in, yep. many Tottenham fans would argue it's time for change at the top. Now, some of those fans might just get be about wishes, to yeah. get their wish because this has just dropped in the Financial Times. The Iranian-American billionaire Jam Najafi is said to be preparing a huge $3.75 billion takeover bid for Tottenham. Um, uh, Najafi is the chair of MSP Sports Capital. He's working with a consortium of investors and the bid is being structured. It is now weeks away from being put in front of Joe Lewis, who is the out-and-out -out owner of Tottenham and the football club uh, chairman, Daniel Levy. So, uh, not only Manchester United uh, at the centre of takeover talks, Tottenham now too. Well, if you remember about two or three months ago, I said to you, I think there's going to be an influx of American interest 
in Premier League football clubs. I think that they feel the rain group that are at the front of this sort of thinking think there's a real opportunity now for the banking community and the investment community to look at football in a completely different way. And so they be are beginning to see that. Now, this is a long way from being anything that's going to move past significant initial discussions. Yeah. And again, it's a deal that's going to be structured with private equity and funding. It's not going to be philanthropic. It's not going to be a nation state dropping in and saying, we just don't care. We're going to spend money how we feel like. We're going to be able to set the, the heather on fire. But it is, in, it is a significant situation for Tottenham. Mm. And it will be a significant situation. Of course, Tottenham fans will light on it, but anyone but Levy. Would it be the right time for Lewis and Levy to sell up? At £3 billion... 3.75 billion, yeah, US dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah 3, 3 billion quid. Bite their arm off at the shoulder. Absolutely. Absolutely. £3 billion pounds of Tottenham. Depends how much debt they're going to take and if they've got a, they've got a, it depends how much a stadium plays into this and what the whole shape of the deal is. But if Joe Lewis gets to walk away and Daniel gets to walk away with £3 billion, pounds, I should imagine they'll sprint. £3 billion quid? I mean, the Glazers are looking for 5 or £6 billion. Tottenham aren't the Man United, are they? Do you no. not think Daniel loves it, though? Or do you think he's been in it that yeah, long? Do. He does do. love it, doesn't I, he? And I also feel that Daniel wants to see the landscape of the football world change slightly to a sustainable model. I think yeah. he has very strong beliefs that football should be sustainable and that everybody should, at the very least, have to break even. Which is And correct. I actually have sympathy with that. I do, yeah. What do you think of these figures, Simon? Uh, 2.5 billion of that is equity. 600 yeah. million is debt. It's not bad, is it? 20% debt. So you think, yeah, if you're the, if you're the seller in this in the, in this instance, and we've yet to find out if Lewis and Levy are the sellers, if they will sell, you would say, yeah, it's I, a, it's attractive enough for them to say yes to. Well, it. I mean, knowing Daniel as I do, that if someone comes knocking on his door with that price, he'll want to push it further forward and push it up. But it's an interesting starting point. The debt ratio to equity, but don't forget the equity will come with a cost as well because there'll be private equity equity in that that will want to return on their money. So it's not just straightforward equity for equity's sake. It has equity with a sting in its tail. But that's not a problem because that's how big businesses are bought. And when you're starting to buy football clubs now, and really, because for the last 10 years, we've constantly listened to Deloitte throwing out valuations of football clubs and no one's ever bought one at those valuations. There's always been this potential. Now we're really beginning to see a maturing of the investment industry saying, football, that'll do for me because we haven't scratched the surface yet. We haven't yeah. really begun to uh, to test the water of mm. how big broadcasting and influences football clubs can be. It's a London club, Tottenham, of course, and a yep. huge one at that with a magnificent stadium. Yep. And yet, if they accepted this bid, 3.75 billion US dollars, it, it would make them less valuable than, say, Liverpool. Well, I think they probably are. Well, they I, are. I mean, I think if you look at globally, the, if you look in the roll call, I, I, was, <laughs> I use a, a sort of music analogy to compare football teams in this country. If you look at the, if you look at Man United, they're the Beatles. Liverpool, are the Rolling Stones, and probably Man City, are Roxy Music. So they've all got value in in, in, in their positioning. Who's Roxy Music? Brian Ferry. Okay. Where, great did, band, the, great where band did the Proclaimers come in in this one? <laughs> um, uh, that's probably <laughs> Brighton. And who's right, uh, said Fred? <laughs> <laughs> so I, wish, I wish I hadn't pulled it up. Well, now. that's the news we're getting, Danny. At the moment, the Iranian American billionaire Jam Najafi is preparing a 3.75 billion US dollars takeover bid for Tottenham. Um, Najafi is the chair of. We can do a bit of homework in this, yep. Simon, while we're in the break. MSP, MSP Sports Capital. Capital. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and is working with a consortium of investors. It's said to be maybe days, maybe weeks away from approaching Lewis and Levy and saying, there it is, take it or leave it. We shall see what happens with that. Want it in the public domain though, don't they? That's interesting, isn't it? They want it? it out there, don't they? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.